Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. Today we have a mixed media tutorial. We're going to flip the wood panel and create a home decor item. We're going to be using a cradled wood panel, a couple stencils, some modeling paste, and a napkin. So I've got this cradled wood panel and I am applying a coat of gesso. Now I'm doing multiple panels at the same time, which is typically how I operate. I'm not sure exactly what size I'm going to do. Now I've taken the cradled wood panel and I flipped it. We're actually going to use the back side. So while that's drying, I'm going to prepare my napkin. Now this is the ISA, I-S-A napkin from Nitty's napkin, and I'll put a link to it in the description box below. You can get this as well as some TCW products that I use from Nitty's. And I've rough cut the napkin while the three plies are still there. And I'm just rough sizing it in the various cradled panels that I have to decide what part of the napkin I may want to use and then make a final decision on which cradled panel. I'm thinking I'm going, I want that rose on the one side. I want on one side to be able to build up some texture. So as I'm going back and forth between my 9 by 12 cradle panel and my 8 by 10 cradle panel. Not sure if I want two bunnies or one bunny. All these decisions will be made as I go. So I finally decided I am going to use the 8 by 10 cradled wood panel. Now this one I got from the dollar store. Be careful when you get things from the dollar store. Sometimes the quality isn't necessarily there and you might have to do some repairs, so check it over. I did sand them before I was putting the gesso on. Now I want to add some texture to the frame. By inverting the cradled wood panel, we are basically making a hanging that frames the work. So here I've taped down the stencil and I'm putting modeling paste through the stencil to build up texture on the frame. This is going to add pattern and detail and we're going to play with paint colors and really bring out this texture down the road. Now in between the parts, I am stopping and drying it so I don't make a mess of what I've already put on. Then I line up the stencil again as best I can and continue around the frame putting modeling paste. It's a bit, it takes a bit of time because you do have to stop in between to dry it, but it's well worth it. Now, some cradled panels have, you know, like half an inch wide. I've got ones that are more about a, an inch and a quarter wide, and you can have fun choosing different ones, and it's going to give a different look. Basically, we're going, we're developing our own shadow box for this. And there's a close-up of the texture. So I'm working my way around and now I'm scraping off the excess. Now you could do as I'm doing here or you can just let it dry and then it often breaks off later or you can sand it off. Your choice. Make sure you clean your stencils after you put modeling paste through them. So I'm just gradually working my way around. This stencil is called Crystal Flowers. It's a slimline stencil, perfect for slimline cards, but not just limited to slimline cards. So now I am finalizing what parts of the napkin I want to use, and I'm doing further cuts. So I'm going to put this part of the napkin this way and then I've cut off this flowers and I'm bringing that color to the other side. It was above, I believe it was above the, the rose. Now I'm peeling off the two excess plies. Make sure you get both of them. And final positioning. Now 
Once I have that decided, I am going to use my fine line brush and water to get rid of any of the excess. I just like to get, it, get as much excess off as possible. But the napkin pretty much goes translucent. Now that the modeling paste is dry on the frame, I finalize the placement and I'm going to glue it down onto the inside, back side <coughs> of the cradled wood panel with my fluid matte medium. I'm getting a good coat of it underneath and then I'm going on top. Remember the napkin is fragile and will tear if you get a little too rough and you're going to see me do that and then you'll have to see me fix it. <coughs> Excuse me. Now the reason I'm gluing the napkin down right now is because in the ears and around the mouth it's very white and I didn't want any, I didn't want to doll that in any way even though I'm going to stick with a fairly light background. And there I ripped it. I ripped the napkin right on the bunny. But no worries, I solved that problem, problem with paint later down the road. If it was ripped too bad, you can just add water, lift up the whole napkin and redo it. Now I'm taking white gesso and kind of smudging it around the napkin. This is helping the napkin blend better with the background. And it's a step I just like to do at this stage. And I'm putting it where I ripped the napkin because of course I'm going to go in and paint that Now I'm coming in with unbleached titanium. And I chose that color because that some of that is right in the rabbit. I did not want to go super dark with this background. Now I'm taking the Starflower Net stencil and with a baby wipe, removing the paint through the stencil. This is giving some initial pattern to the background. And that Starflower Net pattern coordinates very nicely with the pattern in that crystal flowers that we added texture to the frame. Putting it on and taking it off. And I'm loving the look of that pattern, very subtle pattern, almost tone on tone in the background. And at this point I thought I might just leave the background as it is, very simple. but it doesn't always have to be complicated. Inside, I am painting that with the unbleached titanium as well, as well as painting the frame, going right over top of the modeling paste texture that I added, as well as the other sides. Nothing difficult here. And I'm rubbing it back because I'm thinking, oh, I may want that texture to show a little bit. Now I'm taking Brilliant Purple and Alizarin Crimson and mixing it on the brush right as I paint the frame, the top of the frame. And I chose this color because it coordinates with the reddish pink flowers that were in the napkin. And when I added this, everything in my world when I was doing this came together. I'm loving the colors and here because I'm mixing those two colors I'm getting a third color in there or fourth color and we're getting building 
interest and there's it, it's not all one flat tone we get multiple shades and i love that color and i could have left it there spoiler alert i don't now i'm painting the outsides as well in this color I'll put a link to some cradle of wood panels in, from the, in the Amazon store if you want to go and check them out. Now, I want to add some texture to the background, but trying to get a stencil in that cradled wood panel like that is really difficult. So here's a workaround. I'm taking that Starflower Knit stencil and I'm putting it on a piece of excess ply napkin. You can use tissue paper too and I'm spreading the modeling paste with a key card across the stencil. Now I have a piece of copy paper underneath that so I can move it. It needs to now completely dry. I'm going to grab another excess ply and do some more. Even though I think I'm only going to need one, I always do more because I, well, you have the stencil out and you have, it's already dirty. And sometimes something happens this way. I don't have to start over. And if I don't use this, it's in my stash ready to use for another project. This is a great way of adding modeling paste stenciling worry free to any project. And I'll put a link to the video where I show how I do this and what, how I've used it. So now I'm just going to water cut the excess off. I could have just ripped this. I like using the napkin better than tissue paper. It goes a little more translucent. And now I'm just going to rip the parts and I'm going to be able to tuck it exactly where I want it because I, and I would not be able to get the stencil in there in this shadow box inverted cradled panel so i want one up here and i'm going to put a little bit down here now again once i glue these down if it doesn't go where i want it if you just add a little bit of water you will be able to lift it off so again no fear no worries don't like it remove it So now that I'm happy with the four places that I'm going to add a little bit of texture, I'm going to glue it down with my Fluid Matte Medium. Again, I'm being generous with the Fluid Matte Medium. This is the Liquitex brand and pressing it down. As you can see, the napkin goes completely translucent and it glues it right down. So if you have trouble stenciling, even if it was a flat surface, and you don't want to risk wrecking your background, you can always do the modeling paste on tissue paper or a napkin and then transfer it this way. I love the additional texture. So now I'm taking some brown paint, acrylic paint, liquefying it and rubbing it on and then rubbing it off with a baby wipe. I just want some of that brown that again is in the bunny to get into the background. And I I'm, I'm, wasn't really intending to go vintage, but that's where this wanted to go. So I'm adding just that little bit of brown, toning it down, adding and deleting. adding more. I grab some
want it a little darker. Then I'm spraying with rubbing alcohol and lifting up because I'm thinking maybe that's all I want to do. Make it a little, go back to a little bit whiter. Then I want to introduce some of that purple and green or pink to the background. So I grab my ink tense blocks, but you can grab acrylic paint as well. Just liquefy it. I want to add a little bit of pink in there, get it into the, some of the nooks and the crannies. So it looks like there's a sea of flowers behind this rabbit, not just with the rabbit and then adding some green so leaves and flowers and I'm rubbing it out Just adding that little slight touch of color. to add a little bit of white so I brought back that star flower net and I'm just stenciling with some white acrylic paint it's adding a little bit of brightness back onto the panel and I like having some that are textured and some that are not I just remember right now I was going to do some script stamping on this but I guess I did decided that I didn't need to but you could add some stamping as well and if you don't can't get it into the nooks and crannies you can stamp that onto tissue paper or napkin and transfer it the same way we did the modeling paste embellishments So now that everything's there, I want to add some depth to the coloring of the rabbit and the flowers. I'm adding a mixture of white gesso and acrylic paint, getting a very painterly effect, not being too precise going over top of the flowers. I just want this to look a little more painted and a little less like I've just glued down the napkin. But it looked lovely before I add, did this as well. So you have options and you can do whatever you're more comfortable doing. Here I'm doing the same with green. And I don't show all of the painting here because it is a fairly long process and I don't know how interesting that is for you to watch. Adding some white back in, making getting that painterly effect.
and then working my way through the different flowers. I always start with whatever I think is the easiest and then work my way up to what I think may be more difficult. Adding white gesso, letting that dry a little bit, but then not waiting for it to dry completely because then I get the blend. I want different tones in those colors, some darks, some lights. You can also add flowers that aren't even there. And as you can see, I'm kind of drawing it as I go. Now moving on to the purple flowers. You can even change the color if it suits your composition better at this stage. Here, if I just added a purple flower because there wasn't one. And now I'm working on the hair, the rabbit's fur hair. Mixing different browns and yellow oxide was kind of the yellow that's in there, Prush or Naples yellow as well. <clears throat> I'm doing more of a wash for the fur than globbing the paint on because I didn't want to lose all the hair or fur texture to it. I wanted some of that detail to still come out. So I'm thinning the paint a lot more here than I did with the flowers. And then using a fine line brush to add some of that hair back in, just the details of the hair. Using brown, a little bit of black. go little by little here I'm adding black I'm making sure everything's dry before I do the fine line because I don't want it to wick out Adding, some, uh, adding the whiskers in with the, the fine line brush. And if you make a mistake, you do have some time to lift it off. And because everything is permanent underneath, that's possible. You've also given it a generous coat of gel medium when you glued it down.
and we just keep moving along. Now I'm adding some highlights and some shading to the flowers and a big gulp and I attempt to do the larger flower. First adding gesso, then coming in with the alizarin crimson. The gesso and the globby paint gives texture. And then you just play with the colors. And if it's not exactly what was there before, that's okay, because nobody sees the before and after except for you. So now I'm going to shade or edge just like I would on a page, but I thought I'm going to add that to see what happens. And I really like that effect. It makes the shadow box look deeper. It does frame the picture and I'm using a combination of brown with a little bit of black. And just like when I edge the pages, I'm using my angle brush. Now, some of this inside here got a little dirty, so I'm just going in and I'm touching up. I could have cut this footage, but I just want to show you. It's easy, easy enough to fix. And if it's too dark, you just add a little gesso and then do the paint. Now, I wanted to bring out the texture on the frame. So I'm putting white acrylic paint on the pad of my finger and rubbing it gently across the texture and it's getting caught you can see and I come back and I make it a little more bright or opaque and now you can really see how it plays that modeling paste texture really goes well with the star flower net that's on the inside of the panel and adding white here is making it brighter And you can't tell for if there's any imperfect modeling paste on there. It looks wonderful. A textured frame. So once that's dry, I'm adding, doing the same thing, and I'm going over it with a little bit more sparingly with gold. Now the gold is reading really well with the vintage feel and the the golden yellow oxide of the rabbit, warms it up, really takes it to another level of vintage, I think. But if you liked it with the white, that's where you can stop. You could do black if you wish. I love how this inverted flipped cradled panel turned into a frame. Splattering it with gold. And letting that dry. Now I decided on the outside of the frame I wanted, it was a little flat. And you know, as I said, it was a dollar store purchase. So it's kind of imperfect. The best way to hide those imperfections, put some other pattern on top. So here I'm just using that crystal flower stencil and going around the outside with gold. Here I'm just edging it with gold. And then I come in and I'm adding just a little bit of edging with black. And again, if you are perfect and happy with it at gold, then that's where you can stop.
Now I will give this a coat of varnish. Probably a satin finish once it's completely cured and dried. I don't varnish it right on the same day. Love how that little bit of black adds to it. There's some close-ups of the finished project. It can be in a plate rack. You can put a hanger on it and hang it on the wall. Or it can just be sit on a shelf. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you learned a few things. Leave me a comment in the in the description box. Check out the links and in the description box as well. And until next time, go get creative.